Good afternoon. Ladies and gents, today we are going to be doing a walkthrough on how to perform the DRZ 400, what they call the quote unquote free power mod. Um, a lot of you guys have probably, uh, and gals who uh, own this bike, uh, may be wondering about putting maybe a aftermarket light bar, um, uh, upgrading the headlamp, maybe a GPS, uh, USB, power port, heated grips, things like that. Um, on your bike, but like me, you've probably realized with some of the research and your own testing with a voltmeter, have realized that the stator uh, does not, um, at its current configuration with the regulator rectifier and its wiring, um, does not provide you a lot of overhead, uh, electrical overhead to put on those uh, peripherals that you're wanting to do. So, uh, like I said, I did some research, um, found that there was a uh, solution to this, and it's relatively easy. Um, it doesn't require uh, does require a little bit of um, soldering skills, but nothing to uh, nothing you can't learn through the University of YouTube. Um, so, before we get started, I have to obviously get to the regulator rectifier uh, and the wiring harness um, and disconnect uh, a, a connector and then uh, take it from the battery. And uh, I'll show you guys how to do that when we get there. Uh, we'll get started by removing the seat. Uh, that's gonna be a five millimeter uh, Allen wrench where my tusk rack connects, uh, a couple eight millimeter bolts on the far side with a socket wrench, and then these uh, hand twist um, uh, catches for the fairing here. Um, and once we get there, I'll um, cut it back and bring you guys with me. So short edit, starting now. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the regulator rectifier. There was a zip tie here. We took that off. And you can, on the back side, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it back there, is where the you've got the wiring loom that comes to the regulator rectifier from the stator. And it comes up underneath the frame here and it connects to this connector and this connector, okay? So what we're effectively gonna be doing with the free power mod is we're gonna re remove the regulator rectifier, we're gonna remove this connector, and we're gonna create a jumper lead that goes from here straight to the battery. Um, again, your, re your results may vary. Um, documentation that I've found so far, anybody uh, on average, people get from anywhere from 0.2 volts to you know 1.2 volts. So you're again, it's kind of like the silicone lottery when you're building computers. You, you, you get some, you, you get what you get, but it is a net positive. So it is definitely worth uh, doing. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the regulator rectifier, disconnect it from the loom, and then get it on the bench and do some soldering to create that jumper lead. Okay, so we've got the regulator rectifier off the bike. Uh, just a couple things you're gonna basic things you're gonna need to get this job done. You're not gonna need a lot. You're gonna need soldering iron, some um, solder, uh, wire cutters, uh, strippers, your regulator rectifier, some terminal connectors for the battery for your jumper. Um, I bought this insulated automotive wire from my local Napa. Um, just so it keeps things tidy. Uh, you're gonna want to peel the outer insulation off so you can get to the inside wires. Um, this is all uh, gonna be um, 14 gauge because that's all they had at the time. Um, and then you're gonna wanna get a fuse holder because you're gonna wanna fuse, uh, protect this uh, circ this jumper with a fuse and some heat shrink. Uh, I've got a pocket knife here and assist me in the stripping process. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, build this thing real quick and then I'm going to come back and then show you the uh, finished product just to confirm for you, this is the connector we're removing, um, and save it too. In the event that this doesn't, uh, you, you have some issues after the fact, you can, uh, put it all back together the way you had it stock. Um, but this is going to be the connector that we're um, going to be replacing. Uh, also, when you're removing your regulator rectifier, you're going to find these connectors are real tight to get around the frame and the carburetor. Um, so you may need to remove the little carburetor breather tube. It's just held on by a um, pinch clamp. Uh, don't pull from the wire end, push from the connector end when you're pushing it through the frame, uh, uh, through the bike to protect the integrity of your connector. And uh, so we'll be right back with the jumper once we're done. Okay, so we're all done with our soldering and our heat shrinking. So here's our rectifier. Here's the plug we removed, and we left a little extra just in case we need to replace it. And as you can see, we uh, soldered this connection where this plug would be. It is now going to our jumper 
with our inline fuse. This is going to go to our positive terminal. It's going to go to our negative. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the bike and show you how I routed the wires. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, we're back at the bike here. I got it installed. I'm going to show you how to, how I routed the wires. Um, so what you're going to want to do is uh, this yellow clip um, is going to be one of the larger pieces that you're going to have to push through on this side of the frame. Um, so what I found to be helpful to get it out and to put it back in was to remove this uh, breather from the carburetor, just pull it off so it gives you some room to get these connectors back up, as, as well as the, the fuse um, here is also a little tricky. So obviously you're going to have to do one at a time, just like I said before, make sure you're pushing from the connector, not pulling the connector through. This plug is no longer going to be used. So we're going to tape this up and make sure no uh, water or dust gets in there and just tuck it back up in there. So, uh, around, the, it's going to feel tight because it's going to impinge on the back side of the, re the rectifier here. That's normal. Okay. That's how it is stock. So it is a tight fit, but you go up through here behind the frame out towards the, the back side and then as you can see here my wiring loom connection right through here it's kind of I got plenty of room uh, and then I put the fuse back here with the fuse as well for my tender so ignore that and you can see we made our our turn here to get to the positive and then our negative goes to the battery here so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook everything back up and then we're gonna start it make sure it runs before we um, button everything up. Uh, so let me know how that works out for you guys. I hope this video was helpful and uh, leave a comment in the uh, bottom. I'm no electrician, uh, but all my connections where you can solder, solder. Try to avoid using uh, automotive connector, crimp connectors. Uh, soldering is going to be your best bet for reliability. Um, oh, that reminds me before I finish, uh, we're going to go over here. Um, I removed the uh, kickstand nanny and it is tucked down in here. Uh, oh, here we go, right here. Uh, I just got it heat shrinked. Uh, you can see it right here. Um, that goes to the kickstand on the other side. There is a blue or uh, green connector. You'll see there are only green connector uh, for it. Um, it's uh, obviously, oh, sorry about that. Uh, the It's obviously not there because I removed it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, uh, let me know how that works out for you guys. And uh, if you like this content, um, next order of business is going to get, uh, I'm going to do some research. I don't know if I necessarily need to replace this automatic cam chain tensioner, uh, but uh, I'll do some more research. This is a later model, so, or a newer model. Um, and then I guess the last thing we would do would be to check those stator, stator bolts, make sure those are locked, tidied up and the uh, drive sprocket. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. And I hope it was uh, helpful for you guys. And if you leave a comment, I will be pretty prompt in replying uh, to help you out. Let's catch you guys later bonus edit i almost forgot to tell you guys um so i did disconnect the clutch nanny here uh, i just melted over the plastic connector to keep water from getting inside the, uh, the clutch lever uh, but there's going to be a wire that goes through here tracks along the loom and it's going to come to a, a white connector with yellow wiring with a green stripe it is the only connector that's going to look like this okay um so what you're going to do is you're going to clip it. Uh, I clipped it past the connector, uh, but you could clip it before. I just did it because I had more wire to work with. Um, but you're going to clip it past the connector and then you're going to solder the ends together and throw some heat shrink over it. Again, I would avoid using automotive connectors. Okay. So, uh, this will eliminate any potential for, uh, if this is a, some type of short in the connector through moisture, uh, some type of failure at the clutch lever, um, as well as again, removing the, uh, kickstand nanny down here. Um, you're going to have, uh, a lot less, um, a lot less, uh, probability, not probability, a lot less variables for electrical failure. So again, if you have some type of electrical failure, it's limited, it's pretty limited. Um, and hopefully with combined with the power mod, you guys will be able to, um, throw on those additional accessories that we were talking about, the bulb, heated grips, uh, GPS. That's kind of the next step for me. That's why I did these um, electrical mods was to uh, give myself some uh, electrical headroom. Okay, now I'm done. This is uh, Narcan Medic signing off.